Hello everyone. Welcome to Vaisha Aids and hope all of you are going there with your preparation. So if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing to this channel and here you will be getting a lot of foundational video lectures for free and timely updates about the same also. So that will definitely help you in clearing this exam and streamline your preparation. Okay. So, and if you are looking for a good quality test series, you can contact the number given on the screen 7200681675. Okay. So, without any delay, let's get started. So, why I am here today? So, I am here to help you out with one of the most important part of UPSC civil service preparation. That is how to choose your optionals. See, many of the candidates, be it beginners, intermediaries, they are having this common doubt. What optional should I choose? How should I choose? What are the guidelines which I should keep in mind while choosing that optional? So here we'll be addressing all those problems and in particular we'll be talking about one of the most favorite and the popular optionals in UPSC that is sociology. I'm sure you must have heard about this optional if you are into UPSC civil service preparation because it is a common word in the world of UPSC. Okay. Okay, we all might be knowing about toppers. Okay, obvious it is. We'll be seeing their mock interviews and all. So, if you look at all the year ranks, like top ranks, it will be from sociology. Most of the times it's like that. Okay, so if you look at 2020, we are having Jagrati Ashwadi from sociology. And uh, uh, again, looking at 2018, Shrishti Jain Deshmukh. I'm sure that you guys will be knowing about this uh, Shrishti because uh, she has been a public figure nowadays so she is also from sociology and actually she was having a high score in that subject also and again 2013 we are having Neha Jain from sociology only and many of these toppers they are clearing in the first attempt itself and uh, we can see up to an extent it is because of the strength in their optional which is sociology so it's such a safe optional which you can proceed only thing you have to give in a little amount of hard work into it and in this way you can certainly clear the subject okay and you can get a top rank also uh, actually we are having many candidates getting high marks within all the rank ranges like uh, if you take 1 to 100 ranks we are having a fair enough number of people again taking 200 to 300 ranks then also we are having a good amount of people okay and the most important thing is, thing is you can get a score more than 300 in this subject and that is going to help you very much in your overall rank okay see in UPSC means optional is the first and foremost thing you have to focus upon and if you are getting 300 plus in optional then your name will be certainly in the rank list this you can uh, this I can guarantee okay and so what I'm uh, as what I'm telling is it is having a high scoring potential okay and uh, you already know now in optional we are having two papers that is the sixth paper and the seventh paper so in paper one it is pretty static only static portion okay this will be addressing in the later part of this video okay so in paper one it's fairly predictable you can get a score of 150 plus easily if you are covering the syllabus and if you are have, having a predefined set of notes, then you can easily cover up to 150 plus marks. And coming to paper 2, it is kind of a dynamic portion. So, it's, it varies yearly. If you are a smart aspirant, then certainly you can get good scores in this paper also. So, that is about the trend. Okay. Okay. Now, coming to the pros of sociology. Okay. Uh, I have said that sociology is a safe optional but as an aspirant you should be clear why it is a savior optional why all are going behind the sociology see every year many candidates are choosing this so what is the exact reason and why should you go for that that is important okay so first thing is the shorter syllabus okay so this is what everyone we all are interested in shorter syllabus because we are already having a vast syllabus and if our optional is getting simpler then it's going to be easier for us. Okay, so compared to other optionals, you are having a shorter syllabus in sociology. This, I will tell you why. See, in sociology, you are learning many things from other papers also. In GS1, you are having society. In GS2, you are having the, that international relations and all. Then GS3, you are having poverty, hunger, etc. GS4, ethics you are learning. So, in all these aspects, you are getting a tint of sociology in it. Okay. 
you can't write all these papers without having sociology as the base uh, even if you are not from a sociology background you will have to address sociological fact of all these issues you have to address it sociologically you have to give a social angle to it so automatically you are learning sociology okay so that comes handy in this optional also in this optional also you are learning poverty hunger etc okay what are the social implications what is green revolution how it is impacting all these things you are learning here also so that overlaps with the other main subject so you are saving your time whatever you are learning in sociology you can apply it in other other papers also so you are actually saving your time okay so that is why i'm telling there is a shorter syllabus and if you are looking at the syllabus also which we'll be addressing in the later part you can see that many issues that will seem familiar to you okay so that is the first thing then simpler topics why i'm saying telling simpler topics see in sociology you learn you are not going to uh, what learn chemistry biology or something like that which seems to be unfamiliar highly unfamiliar okay you are not going to le learn about any electrical engineering or mechanical engineering or botany zoology nothing like that all issues which you will be learning will be having a real life connect you will be learning about family marriage kinship caste system politics religion all these things it is automatically there in your day to day lives so you are going to view it in a different angle so you can connect to things easily and you can develop that sense of thinking okay so that is the next thing then very very important fact is that while learning sociology you will be developing a social a social responsibility within yourself you will be thinking in an unbiased way okay see only if you inculcate this quality within you you can write good answers not only in sociology in whole mains answers okay for the whole mains preparation you have to develop an unbiased way of thinking to write an answers then only you can view into those issues in a, a clear or a clear way okay that is going to boost your marks also so you can have a difference in opinion you can actually what what you can say you can resolve the difference of opinion and that is going to help you as a civil servant so this is like a foundation for a civil servant how a civil servant should think how a civil servant should act all these things you're going to get with sociology okay so this will help you in better decision making also and as i have already said there are many overlaps within and outside the subject this you need not worry at this stage uh when you are going to prepare you will get that okay uh what all things i can overlap with other papers and all and what how can i save my time all those things you will be getting once you learn your full fledged preparation okay then you are learning many uh, subjects like politics religion uh, then systems of kinship etc we should be having connection with all the other main subject also and many uh, and the uh, and another important fact is that the predictability of possible question areas okay uh, what i can tell is like in paper 1 paper 1 it is a highly static portion i have already told okay so here what you can do is you can actually keep a set of questions all those questions you can underline and keep so these set of questions it will be there in the question paper anyway okay when one way or the other they are going to ask about that so you are entering into the exam hall with a predefined set of questions and that is going to boost your answer if you are already having the draft answers also simply you are going to exam hall and writing that okay so this is a possible effect or possible benefit which you are going to get out of the subject that again interview stage in interview stage one question will be from social issue uh, uh, no matter you are from which optional okay one question or one not uh, not only one many questions they last from social issues only because you are going to serve the society only no so in the interview stage also you are going to get an upper hand from other candidates okay so this is about the see um, social issues are optional so uh, coming to one another important fact also Uh, there is a there is a paper called essay paper in mains okay the first mains paper is essay paper in that one essay will be always related to social issues okay so that essay you are going to score high if you are having sociology as the optional okay. 
now uh, sociology is also having certain challenges okay why we are learning about challenges or why we have to know about the challenges because only then we can make the best use of use out of it once we have identified the challenges we are going to solve it in a better way so that we can make the best benefit out of this okay so since it is one of the highly popular optional the competition is also going to be obviously high okay so many candidates will be choosing so if you take some 100 a uh, people out of them maybe uh, 140 okay maybe 40 minimum 40 people will be having sociology or let's say 20 at least 20 they will be having sociology as the optional so here going you are going to get a high competition level okay so as i have already said this demands a brainstorming because you have to develop that unbiased way of thinking no so if you have to be unbiased you have to storm your brain or you have to give exercise to your brain whatever issue you are uh, coming across okay since uh, when you are re reading the newspaper you will be coming up across different issues so at that point of time you you should be able to develop a multi dimensional thinking only then you can write answers in a multi dimensional way see newspapers can be of course biased okay there are many biased newspapers so when you are coming across such issues you have to pinpoint that and you have to make yourself multi dimensional so this requires consistency okay you have to be consistently doing this exercise and you have to develop answer writing skills because answer writing practice is very important in sociology okay only then you can convey the things more easily to the examiner so this also becomes important that you should be having a precise set of notes okay so why notes are important because you can't always uh, go and read the books every time so uh, at the time of exam you should be having a precise set of notes so that you can refer in a fast track way okay and through that you can increase the chances of getting selected because already i have told competition is high so the quality of your notes should be very good so that you can score high in the subject okay now how can you overcome this challenges okay how can you overcome this challenges so what you can do is you are having other mains papers no gs1 gs2 gs3 i have already said there are many overlaps so you are going to use the overlapping portions or the uh, details from sociology in gs answers so that you can make it socio flavored okay what do you mean by socio flavored you are going to give an extra dimension to all your gs answers through the no through the knowledge of sociology whatever you are learning in sociology that you are going to apply in all the gs answers so that your answers are going to look unique from other candidates and there in those papers also you are going to score high so that you can neutralize that competition okay so i hope this is clear then exploring the arts of note notes making this is very important guys please do this okay this is very important if you are not a uh, practice to making notes believe me it is going to help a way out in your preparation okay then practice one question at least at least one question you have to daily uh, prepare and you have to self evaluate you can refer of course you can refer the topper's answer sheet but that should be a reference only okay you have to develop your own way of writing and you have to self evaluate and you have to consistently sharpen the skills because sociology is all about what you are conveying in your answer sheet okay okay so as per my experience and my opinion i would say that optional is the most important thing in this whole preparation okay if you are a smart candidate you have to analyze this okay how i can score and where i can score more so you will end up in this conclusion only because it is the most important part for securing a good rank in this exam or i would say it is like a one man army or brahmastra which is helping you to clear this exam with ease why i am telling this you uh, you might be already knowing that this exam is having three stages okay prelims mains and interview and prelims as you all know it is a qualifying stage only and mains and interview combined score of these two stages are deciding your rank prelims is nowhere in deciding what your rank is the marks of mains and interview is going to determine your rank okay and within mains and interview interview 
it is highly subjective it actually depends upon the mood of the exam mood of the interview board and your nervousness you will be many of you will be facing the interview board for the first time okay and you can uh, ac actually streamline that preparation or you can actually balance what you are losing in interview in mains and within mains you have to concentrate on optional because that is actually going to decide your rank okay so now you you might have understood what is the importance okay uh, apart from optional you are having other subjects also gs1 gs2 etc but we can't predict what type of questions are coming in those papers but optional you can be sure you can actually go with a predefined set of answers in your optional so it is important to choose it wisely okay simply because someone is telling this optional is good someone is telling philosophy is good some other one is telling but that is good that might be good for them you have to analyze yourself which optional suits you so don't feel hesitant to spend some time spend some quality time on analyzing all the optionals and end up in the right choice it is actually better than making a wrong choice okay so that is about the importance of optional okay so before ending up in an optional or before you are going to learn about an optional you should be having a fair idea of the subject matter in that optional this is very important because as you all know we people we are human beings no so we are not masters in everything we are good at some things while we are weak at some some other things that is humanistic that is quite natural so you have to self evaluate whether it's your cup of tea simply because someone is telling that that optional is good this optional is good you are not going to choose that you have to make a self self evaluation whether i can handle that subject am i having apt interest in that subject that is very important okay so let me introduce this subject sociology as this word meaning depicts you already know it is the detailed study of society and social life okay it is that simple as that it is nothing but the a scientific study we are you are having some certain scientific elements also and you are learning society in a more different way you are analyzing the social life okay by society what i mean is it is a group of people you are not independent okay even if you are financially independent even if you are having emotional independence then also you are interdependent on people around you in some some manner or the other see we are having interaction you are listening to this lecture and in this way we are interacting so as a human being we can't exist independently in the society in some way or the other we are actually interacting with people around us so there are a lot of people around us you are having relatives you are having friends you are having colleagues okay so many people they are having a network of interactions and emotions which is happening over there okay so we are actually learning in detail about this how this uh, interdependence is impacting society how society is impacting us uh, you may uh, you already know about the terms like societal pressure and all no so this is only due to the power of society it is such a powerful entity so can i tell that society it is the sum total of people around you and the happenings between them by happenings i mean interactions emotions relations traditions all these things sum up to make a society and we are leading a social life which means we are not independent but we are interdependent there is a network of interlinkages and this is actually some way helping out the society it is aiding societal development which we mean by social reforms and or no uh, and it is also actually negatively impacting the society so you ultimately end up in drafting solutions for the societal evils and how we can reform the society so this is a detailed study of all these things so this is all about the subject matter and what makes you different from the normal man see society we all are viewing it no it is not like a mechanical engineering or any other engineering subject we all are viewing the society all of us know what is happening around us so what makes you different as a sociologist from the other common people it is in analyzing the things in a multi dimensional perspective you shouldn't be viewing the things in a way that the other people around you are viewing 
so you have to be multidimensional when you get a issue or when you get, get a phenomena when, I, when you are evaluating a social phenomena see, uh, see if you are analyzing something about suicide what are the causes of suicide okay then you should be analyzing it in a multidimensional way not only the society but other factors are also possible to uh, actually drive a man into suicide okay so that things you have to keep in mind so to be multidimensional you have to view society through an unbiased lens this is very 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 important throughout your preparation stage okay so please mark this word unbiased you have to view things in an unbiased perspective only then you can end up writing good answers in of course i agree that it is not possible for a human being to be 100% unbiased it is actually common to be biased in some way or the other it is natural that is not an issue but as far as possible as far as possible you should be unbiased only then you can learn society in a detailed manner you have to understand each and every point and critical points in the society for that you have to think in a multi dimensional way and if you have to think in a multi dimensional way the prerequisite is uh, to be unbiased as far as possible that is what i meant another example i will tell you uh, you will be uh, having newspaper reading every day no as a serious aspirant you should be having that okay so whenever you are skimming through newspapers you will be you will be uh, seeing news criticizing the government okay some newspapers they criticize the government too much and some other newspapers they will be actually aiding the government too much so you have to take the middle path or you have to say you have to see at the pros and cons simply because the newspaper which you are following is always criticizing or supporting the government you should not end up doing that so you so even if the party which you are supporting is ruling then also you have to accept criticisms from their side okay that is the meaning of unbiased and i can guarantee you that if you are practicing this technique you have to brainstorm yourselves to think multi dimensionally and in an unbiased way that is the best exercise you can do for this subject and the whole upsc civil services that is the best exercise you can do you can give good answers in mains and you can also logically answer in interview so that is about the unbiased then another coming to the another uh, thing in sociology see uh, you are having multiple topics in sociology so that is actually backed by this thing tradition you are having a subheading in sociology or a topic in sociology called as caste system why do we follow caste system even today uh, you can you can't tell that caste system is not existing today maybe it is being modernized you are having many matrimonial arts ads no by the community names hindu matrimony muslim matrimony you are having that thing that things no that is depicting the caste system, caste system only so the thing is that there are certain traditions or the societal norms or the unwritten rules which are being followed again and again simply because everyone is following it not because it is having any logic okay so simply because everyone is following it we are also following it we are actually modernizing it to just follow that okay we can't throw it out that is the intention of society or society is not allowing to actually discard that that is why dowry system dowry system is being modernized okay now now uh, do you think dowry system is not existing in india today no it is being modernized only legally it may be punishable but still it is existing that is the meaning of traditions so in sociology you will be analyzing all these things and how society is impacting you see even if you tell uh, uh, society is not at all impacting you you are free from societal pressure that is not the meaning knowingly and unknowingly society is impacting pressure upon you and society is also aiding to your success in many ways so that you have you are going to analyze and another thing which you are going to learn is what is the link with political system see you are having this power struggles and all no so how that is actually getting practiced which all sections are getting power why some sections are privileged and why some other sections are depressed still you can have news of this untouchability and all untouchability again i am telling it is actually being modernized it is not brutal uh, 
uh, as we see in earlier times but it is existing in some parts then patriarchy patriarchy is also existing nowadays no it is it is being changing the forms okay so it is not easy to get rid of these traditions so what are the forms of power within home you are you'll be having power no within homes only you will be having this power struggles one everyone is not having the equal freedom and equal voice in a house then how can you expect a society to be like that so there are different forms of power and how society has evolved we are seeing modern means of life okay so urbanization we are seeing industrialization we are seeing then many revolutions we have seen so how society has actually evolved then what are the forms of discrimination by discrimination i'm not meaning the discrimination within political system there are many forms of discrimination that will be learning in detail and it is very interesting also then forms of marriage matriarchal patriarchal then what are the kinship systems existing in india all these things we will be learning in a multi dimensional perspective and it is interesting also so this is the crux of sociology in a nutshell okay patient strategy okay any exam since upsc is a competitive exam you have to be a smarter aspirant you have to be a hard hard working aspirant also okay so the first key rule or the thumb rule you have to keep in mind is that upsc is not searching for specialist but they need generalist only okay so always keep in mind that you need not get a phd from learning sociology or any other optional okay you have to Uh, meet the exam demand only so always keep in mind while learning this see many candidates they are having this habit of digging deeper into the subject they have to know more okay the uh, crunch for knowledge or the thirst for knowledge is good but it is not going to help you in this exam okay so always study to write the exam only okay next is you have to inculcate some extra dimensions in your answers okay this is where your brain exercise comes into picture if you are consistently practicing answer writing then of course you can think in a multi dimensional way and it can give some extra dimensions so if your co candidate is giving some five points for an answer and if you are able to give 6 to 7 points then you are giving two extra dimensions to that answer two extra dimensions you are giving and you are increasing your rank automatically okay so this you have to keep in mind then learn to write the answers sociologically this you will be learning while writing the answers like you have to apply many concept from paper 1 in paper 2 that comes with the answer writing practice only so if you are mastering in this uh, trick then sociology is going to be very easy for you okay then you have to use the flow charts and diagrams very innovative flow charts you can develop and keep it aside and whenever required you can use it as a weapon okay so uh, one flow chart if you are uh, preparing and uh, keeping it aside at the time of exam you can use this flow chart in many answers as per the requirement okay so that is important then blend current affairs in your answers as i have already said even if you are not having time to learn current affairs for sociology in a separate manner you can even use the current affairs from other mains portions like if some news is there about poverty if the if some news is about a religion that you can write in a sociological manner okay like uh, for example i'll tell there is a thinker called durkheim durkheim is a thinker so durkheim is having some uh, theories related to religion okay so in this static part you can even link the issue of shabrimala or the ayodhya issue which is related to religion only okay so here you are blending the current affairs also okay then dividing the syllabus into static and dynamic is very very important because static portion you need not give much amount of time okay always give shorter amount of time for static syllabus and dynamic portion you have to be dynamic of course okay so static syllabus you can keep it aside and you have to prepare a set of answers and uh, keep it okay so that you can use it anywhere okay anyhow uh, even if the question is going to twist in paper 1 then also you can write the same answer which you have prepared for the static portion but dynamic it's not like that it is demanding a little more patience from you so that you have to that i can't guarantee but static portion you can uh, surely get okay so if you are dividing like this you can uh, you can save your time also okay so that is also important 
okay so coming to the next important question which are the sources which i should refer so this is also a common doubt okay so the rule number 1 or believe me this is the most important thing which is going to help you always keep your sources minimal and standardized okay you need not refer many number of books to score high in the subject the minimal number of sources with proper revision itself is sufficient okay only thing is that you have to choose the very relevant sources and you have to keep on revising it okay so always keep it minimal and there are scattered sources for various topics uh, in the syllabus as a whole you can't cover from one single textbook or one single material there are many materials and what you can do is for many topics for one topic you can refer one source uh, while for the other topic you have you are going to refer one another source okay so like that you have to choose many sources choose various sources for various topics that is the key and if you are someone who is not having that base or uh, you are not having such conceptual clarity then you can go with ncerts from class 11 and 12 it will be giving uh, many keywords and all so selected points and keywords that you can select from these ncerts and keep it aside other than that you need not cover the ncerts uh, as per my opinion my experience i haven't covered all these ncerts i have just took some selected points and keywords and added it to my notes that is more than enough okay then coming to sociological thinkers thinkers it is one important portion in sociology from which you are going to get some 70 to 90 marks so this you have to prepare in a wise manner and also it is a static portion so you can actually keep a draft set of answers also for the thinkers so for that you can refer the book by ritzer george ritzer and there is a book by haralam bose from which you can cover the selected chapters only that chapters you will be knowing if you are choosing sociology as the option the point i am trying here to convey is that there are many sources from which you have to select the most relevant points okay then for the paper 2 which i have said it is a dynamic paper you can refer kl sharma okay so there is a book called social stratification and mobility from kl sharma so you are not going to learn all these things uh, so you are going to pick up certain points only then any current affairs magazine becomes important because all of the sociology candidates will be very well versed in static portion and even the dynamic portion also so if you are going to uh, write your answers sociologically and uh, see many many current affairs you need not uh, prepare current affairs in a different a different manner whatever current affairs you are learning for your mains gs only you can give it a sociological flavor and add it with your answers so your answer will be looking more beautiful okay then self notes this is the primary source without self notes any source which you are referring it is going to be in, uh, it is not going to benefit as your self notes okay so Uh, whichever source you are referring always make sure that you are picking the most important points and keeping your self notes okay then itnu books are also a very good source okay um, if you see itnu books it's a bit lengthy but it is very understandable okay it is written in a simple language so that four minute of uh, especially in dynamic portions like paper 2 you can refer to itnu books then epw magazine as per my opinion is a good source which you can refer okay so that is about the sources now coming to the investment and output how much month i have to learn okay so um, as per my experience i will tell that i will um, say that 4 to 5 months is enough to cover sociology and 3 hours per day you have to practice okay 3 hours minimum you have to practice and within this 3 hours at least half hour you have to practice for answer writing okay answer writing throughout you have to practice okay uh, other than that without answer writing practice whatever you learn it is not going to give you any result okay so approximately 4 to 5 months you can dedicate for sociology and 3 hours minimum i am telling if you uh, if it's possible you can devote some 3 to 5 uh, hours okay so that will be sufficient to learn this subject then master the sociological thinkers because i have already told um, it is a high probability area and uh, the yield is very high okay 70 to 90 marks you are going to get directly from sociological thinkers only so you have to master it in a better way 
and the concepts also you can use it in another portions and paper one it is predictable and high scoring many people will be getting 150 plus easily 150 plus is a common score in all the sociology papers okay then paper two it is dynamic so it is going to act act as your rank booster so any candidate i'll, I'll take an example let uh, three candidates are there they are serious aspirant also okay so they are getting paper 1 150 150 and 150 so who what is going to decide their rank how much mark they are going to get in paper 2 that is going to decide the rank so paper 2 you have to view as a rank booster okay so that you have to prepare in a better way and paper 1 of course you have to prepare it seriously but that you should get 150 plus okay then saving time in another gs papers that is also important so Considering all these aspects, the investment versus output ratio, it is pretty good. Okay. You are investing very less and the output you are going to get is more. Okay. So, in that aspect also, this uh, boosts your preparation. So, now coming to the exam pattern or question pattern. See, knowing about the question pattern is important because then only you can prepare in an exam oriented manner. So, you are having two papers, paper 1 and paper 2. So, both are for 250 marks each. And in both paper, you will be having two subsections, A and B. Part A, part B. Okay. And in one, A part, paper 1, A part 1, 2, 3, 4 and B part 5, 6, 7, 8. Similarly, you will be having for paper 2 also. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. And if you see here in first section, no, this first question, fifth question and first and fifth. These much questions. Here you will be having 5 short questions. That is 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E. And each question will carry 10 marks which makes it 15 marks. 10 into 5, 50 marks. Okay. Then similarly for fifth question also you will be having the same pattern. So in paper 1 and paper 2 for both parts A and B the first question is compulsory. 1, 5 is compulsory in both the papers and each of these questions will, have, will be having 5 short questions of 10 marks each. So that is about the first thing. Then in the remaining now, remaining 2, 3, 4 and 6, 7, 8 you are having in both papers now. So all these questions it will be having three subsections 2a b c 3a b c 4a b c so you'll be having in this pattern and here you can see that one question will be of 10 marks and the other two questions will be of 20 marks so 2 into 20 plus 10 that also makes it 50 marks okay so i hope this is clear and as i have already said Question 1 and 5 is compulsory in both the papers and out of the remaining 6 questions, 2 out of the 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, you have to attend any 3 questions and there is a condition that all the 3 questions, it cannot be from the same part. Okay, so if you are attending uh, 2, 3 and 7, it's fine. You can't take 2, 3 and 4 or 6, 7 and 8. That is not possible. You have to attend any 3 and all three cannot be from the same part. So that is about the question pattern. So coming to the next important part that is syllabus. See, I would say that syllabus is the first step to your success mantra. Okay, so what do you what you can do is you have to take the printout of the syllabus and you have to paste it in the wall or your study wall or something or keep it with you. That means every day when you are learning sociology, uh, before learning you have to take a five minutes and uh, skim through the syllabus you have to become you have to get familiarized with the syllabus for that you have to keep it skimming through it daily okay so why i am telling this is see you are having two papers no paper one and paper two so in both these papers of sociology you are having overlapping portions so if you have to prepare in a smarter way by saving your time you should be very clear about the syllabus and i have already said that you are having overlaps with other GS papers also. So, if you have to interlink all these things, you should get a clear idea about the syllabus. Okay, now coming to the paper 1. 
in paper 1 the first chapter you are having sociology the discipline so here you will be learning an introduction to sociology what is society how this subject emerged see it is a younger social science younger social science and it emerged in 1800s so it is a relatively younger discipline so why it is emerging and what relation it is having with common sense all these introductory kind of things you will be learning here and two and three as you, as you can see sociology as a science and research methods it's something like a scientific kind of thing what all scientific techniques you are using to study the society so even though you are learning society there also you are having certain methodologies and certain scientific techniques which you have to apply for learning sociology so two and three is relating to that okay now coming to the next chapter sociological thinkers which is the very very important portion 70 to 90 marks you are going to get from this single portion and the concepts from here you are going to use it everywhere and anywhere and the whole sociology it is based on thinkers only okay so here you will be learning about some six thinkers Karl Marx and all you will be know, knowing about communism and all no so that then Emil Durkheim Weber all these things you need not get confused once you are into the sociology you will be learning about these things okay so if you can see here as I have shown there are many terms like mode of production, alienation, bureaucracy, protestant ethic. So, these terms are difficult actually. But the concepts are very very simple. So, you have to do a reverse engineering kind of thing. See, what I can tell as an example is, you will be learning photosynthesis in the, you have learned photosynthesis in the earlier classes. No, what is photosynthesis? So, in the first, uh, first look itself, it seems difficult. Oh, what a big word photosynthesis but the process is very simple no the process is simple and they have termed it that termed it as photosynthesis only so it's like that only in sociological thinkers also the concept is simple but they are giving certain names and terms so you can actually do a reverse engineering first learn the concept and you have to give it a name okay then coming to stratification and mobility this is also important from the interview point of view and for other GS papers wherein you will be learning about poverty, deprivation, exclusion. See some people they are getting privileges more than others. Why some people are having high social status in the society? What is the uh, different kinds of discrimination which we see in the society? All these things you will be learning. And mobility it is a very important word. You can use it everywhere. What are the kind of mobility? Mobility means one person is moving up in the social status or moving down. Okay, upward and downward mobility is there. Okay, so that is mobility. And what are the tools of mobility? By education, we can increase the standard of living. By money, we can increase the standard of living. So, I can tell that both money and education serve as the tools of social mobility. So, that is about this chapter and it is also very, very important. Okay. Now, works and economic life. Here, what you will be learning is uh, labor problems. Then, how labor is related to society. Then, we are having formal and informal forms of labor. See, informal forms of labor means unaccounted labor. Okay. Uh, they are not organized workers. They are unorganized workers. They will be having many, many issues like lack of tenure, lack of proper working conditions, etc. Then, how our society has evolved over a period of time. Earlier, we, we were having a slave society, feudal society. Okay, now we are having an industrial society. Democracy is there. Okay, so how work and economic life is relating to society? That we will be learning in this sixth chapter. Okay, now next is the sociological theories of power. Here itself, we will be learning how power is concentrated in many hands. See, when I mean power, uh, here you will be addressing multi-dimensional ways of power. Power is not only political power. There are many forms of power. If, if you take your home also, in your home, are everyone having equal rights? No, no. Uh, one, the, one patriarch will be having more rights. Even though the situation is changing in recent days, um, many situations we can see that the patriarchy is prominent. Okay. So, that all things you will be learning how theories of power have evolved. Then bureaucracy. 
of which you are going to be a part or you are aspiring to become a part that you will be learning then what are the pressure groups what impact it is having on the politic politics and what are the political parties how it is relating to society what it is um, how, how it is impacting the society then the concept of uh, democracy citizenship etc that you will be learning then many social movements are there recently if you take me to movement this there then eia protest we have seen what implications it is having on society what are the uh, implications of collective action what do you mean by revolution actually so all these things you will be learning in a sociological way then religion and society it is very very important okay as marx have said marx marx has said religion is the opium of masses okay so what are the theories relating to religion then the uh, different forms of religion like animism monism these are ancient forms of religion all these things you will be learning then how religion has uh, itself um, adjusted in the modern society like you can see a correlation between religion and science uh, many youtube channels are coming many religion based tv channels and tv serials are coming up okay so all these things how society is adapting to religion how religion is adapting to society all these things you will be learning then fundamentalism maoism terrorism all these kinds of things you will be learning then kinship okay now coming to the systems of kinship ninth chapter uh actually this is my personal favorite and here you will be learning about the uh, things which you see in your day to day lives only what is the concept of family what is household marriage there are different forms of marriage and there are different traditions all over india okay then how marriage is implicating the lives of people then what are the types of uh, types and forms of family like we can see patriarchy then we can see matriarchy which is prevalent in northeast india then what are the lineage and descent like um, there is um, this hypogamy hypergamy etc then patriarchy and sexual division of labor very important portion still in this 21st century we can see patriarchy being associated with the division of labor like women uh, they are meant for cooking cleaning etc and uh, and if, even if they are getting opportunities to go for work it is being glorified and not being treated equally okay so all these things how patriarchy is getting modernized what are the contemporary trends all these things will be addressing in this chapter and it is very important also then social change in modern society okay what changes have stepped in due to the efforts of many social reformers or many social movements how society is evolving day by day and what are the theories of social change what is development what do you, what is the word meaning of development and are we having development in the true sense what are the agents of social change anything can be an agent of social change like i have said if you are getting good education then obviously you can uh, go high in the social mobility ladder you can get an upward social mobility okay then that is another topic on the education and social change how money is contributing to the Uh, increased social status of a person how science and technology is impacting our lives okay so that is all going to be part of this module then coming to the paper 2 so paper 1 is complete pretty enough uh, pretty easy you know so coming to paper 2 also you will see lot of portions from paper 1 coming into paper 2 also okay so in the, uh, if it is if it is the case as a smart aspirant and if you are good enough with the syllabus if you are familiar enough with the syllabus you can actually incorporate more points from paper 1 and paper 2 and make your job easier because the same portion you are not duplicating and studying whatever you have learned in paper 1 you are going to keep it aside and you are not going to duplicate it in paper 2 okay now paper 2 it is uh, in a indian perspective while paper 1 it is in world perspective so the paper 2 starts uh, itself start with introducing indian society what is the peculiarity of indian society and what are the speciality of indian society so here you will be learning thinkers also with respect to indian society like gs guri mn shrinivas ar deshai they have actually studied soci sociology from an indian perspective and what is the uh, multi multilateral the structure of indian society then colonial rule of indian society that is obviously the most important part of indian society and many things have changed uh, since colonial rule okay so 
what is the background of Indian nationalism that also you will be learning in a sociological way. The history kind of thing only you will be learning in a sociological way. Then modernization of Indian traditions like you can see marriage rituals and all no. So uh, people want to continue the rituals also but you, they have to modernize also. So modernization of Indian traditions. Then colonial period. During colonial period we can see many protestant movements. What were the social causes for that? How you can analyze it in a social manner that you are going to learn. Then social reforms. All these things are part of this module. Okay. Then coming to the social structure. See, India is a predominantly agrarian economy. About 55% of Indians, they are employed in agriculture. So, rural and agrarian social structure becomes very important. What is the idea of Indian village? Within Indian village, if you are, um, if you have learned history, you would have learned about the tussles between Gandhi and Ambedkar about Indian villages. Okay, so all these things comes from social aspects only. And village studies, many sociologists they have done many village studies and they have made many conclusions also. All these things you will be learning here. The caste system, another very important portion, caste system. Um, how um, it is actually abolished article 17 it talks about abolition of untouchability but still we can see many forms of discrimination even in school and college hostels okay so still in the minds of people this caste is like deep rooted okay so what are the perspectives of caste system uh, you will be learning about many thinkers what are the features what are the forms of untouchability that also you will be learning then the tribal communities in India, one of the most neglected communities, okay, so they are the tribal communities. So, what are the actual problems faced by them? Why they have been excluded from the Indian society for, for a long period of time and what are the factors which is actually hindering their social progress? So, that things you will be learning and how we are facing issues with respect to integration of these people into the mainstream, okay. All these things you will be learning in this chapter. Okay. Then social classes in India. See, here you will be learning the classes. Classes means it is something related to the uh, economic status. How much money you have. So, you can see an emerging middle class in India. Okay. Uh, earlier, India was having a uh, lower class people. Okay. Uh, most of the people, they were having uh, wage, wage laborers or day earners. Okay. But now we can see. In the recent past, we can see an influx or uh, an uh, upheaval, upheaval of middle class in India. The middle class is getting widened. Okay, day by day it is getting widened. Like you can divide itself, upper middle class, lower middle class, uh, like that you can divide actually. So, how this is happening? What is contributing to this? Contributing to this? All these things you will be learning in social classes in India. Okay, now systems of kinship in India. This is also come from the paper 1 only. So, you have already completed it in paper 1. So, whatever is left, you are going to cover in paper 2. Okay. Then, household dimensions of family. Again, see, patriarchy and entitlement. This already you have covered, no? So, again it is coming here. Religion, again coming in paper 2. So, the same religion which you have analyzed in a world perspective, you are going to give it an Indian flavor and going to study in paper 2. Then social changes in India. This is also one important portion how social changes have happened. See, India is a land of many social changes because uh, we are the second most populated country and we have been making uh, improving changes day by day. Okay. Although we are uh, yet to make many changes, but then we are improving for sure. Okay. So, what are the visions of social change in India? Uh, we were having many types of planning uh, like that is actually part of your economy okay gs3 economy so that you will be learning here in a sociological way then constitution law and social change how constitution has helped in ensuring a social change like you can see lgbtq rights coming into picture and uh, lgbtq community is being given more rights and all no so all those things comes in this area constitution and law and how it is uh, actually impacting the social change then education and social change that is education is a very important part in whole sociology if you have been uh, vigilant you could have seen that education itself has come three or four times okay then again rural and agrarian transformation in india so 
the syllabus itself within this five minutes only you can see many overlaps so that is the benefit of sociology okay so that is about the syllabus of the uh, syllabus and again coming to the third part you can see that industrialization and urbanization comes as a important part in this syllabus wherein you can see industrialization it is a, a relatively newer process 1990s and all and urbanization also if you see many urban sprawls has been happening you can see this word urban sprawls okay so this you will be learning in detail uh, the simple word meaning is that urbanization is increasing okay that is the word meaning of this one okay so what is actually the reason why uh, industrialization and, and urbanization is taking place in india what are the problems of slums then what are the forms of child labor which is existing in india okay what are the urban problems we are having you can see some urban flats and all no and the urban unemployment is there okay so that is why we are having slums and all okay all these things you will be covering in this module and next coming to politics and society again we, the same thing we have covered in paper one only here you will be learning in a political way the political theories you will be learning in a social way okay then coming to social movements in modern india we are having many farmers and uh, peasants movement like uh, farm bill protest you have known no farm bill protest that is a recent issue so that that also comes within this module then reservations many people they are asking for more and more reservations okay so that comes in this then environmental movement eia protest then ethnicity movement the caa protest so everything you can blend with current affairs also so if you are learning in this way the syllabus when you are when you are seeing a syllabus immediately try to link it with something which you are comfortable with or something which you are familiar with so that makes your work very very easy okay population dynamics okay india is the second most populated country so population dynamics becomes very very important because we are having a high demographic dividend which means that we are having a huge number of people in the younger population in the working population so that is going to benefit our economic progress of the country not only economic progress social progress of the country also so how you can tap that benefit that becomes the part of this module population dynamics what is the birth rate what is the death rate what is the neonatal rate um, all these things comes within this module then the triangle kind of thing the population triangle all these things it will come here then there is family planning then sex ratios uh, if you see in india uh, we are having varied sex ratios in different parts of the country okay then infant mortality reproductive health all these things will become part of this module then the challenges of social transformation okay this is one important portion and you can actually give many many aspect the uh, if you are well versed in sociology then you can give many out of box answers in this module okay because still we are having many challenges to social transformation which is due to the deep rooted patriarchy in our society there are certain traditions which is deep rooted okay so due to that we are unable to change even if we are making efforts to change our society we are not up to the mark to make a change so what are those challenges poverty is a poverty is a challenge inequality is a challenge inequality it is visible and invisible okay there are certain visible inequality and invisible inequality you can take the example of upsc civil service only in the preparation stage can a poor poor person afford to go to delhi and take the coaching no certainly no because he he or she has to spend a lot of money which is not affordable so that is a form of inequality okay so then poverty is the reason then violence against women india is a country where women are facing a rape in every 8 minute or so so there are data like that so violence are prominent against women then caste conflict we are having we are having honor killings honor killings we are having today also then ethnic conflict we are having uh, then illiteracy disparities in education so india since it's a multi dimensional society it is a multilingual multi social it is a socio culturally diverse society we are having this varied aspect of education and sex ratio and communalism all these aspect in various parts of india okay
I hope you have gotten insights into this subject and uh, now you can choose whether to choose this optional or not. It's up to you. So kindly think over the optional. So don't make a wrong choice. You can take time and think over it. Okay. Will this suit me? Can I perform better in this subject? Is it my cup of tea? All these things you have to think in a wise manner.